Hi, my name's Jo, and I'm disabled. There are many different ways that people respond to that statement, usually ranging between, okay, cool, or no, you're not. The first either accepts my disability or doesn't want to get involved in arguing about it, and the second would rather start arguing about what they feel a real disability is. I've slowly learned to ignore those voices and not engage in arguing with them, because usually you won't get anywhere. But what happens when these same voices come from yourself instead of someone that you'll probably never meet again? This is called internalized ableism. Ableism is the discrimination that disabled people face, and internalized ableism is the thought process behind this. For example, well, that person doesn't look disabled. This can then become externalized, verbally calling someone out on their lack of a visible disability or questioning their needs for access. But imagine a society where there are no physical or metaphorical barriers to participation and everyone had equitable access to any aspects of society that they wish to be a part of. Where access needs were granted to those who need them and not just those with medical impairments. I believe this is something that we can achieve. But in order to gain this accessible society, we all must confront our ableism. I'm going to use the following steps to demonstrate how I began to overcome my internalized ableism to help you to begin in questioning your own. Step one is to educate. In the summer of 2020, I was asked to run for the role of invisible disabilities lead for my SU. The year before, I'd been diagnosed with a chronic illness and had spent the last year learning to understand my condition and the best ways to support myself. I'd become comfortable in using the term chronic illness but I'd never used the word disabled to describe myself. As I was listing points in my manifesto, I spoke about my volunteering experience, my recent diagnosis, and I then thought to myself, am I disabled enough? And I then thought further, am I disabled? So I closed the document on my laptop and opened up Google. I typed in the words disability definition. A disability is a physical or mental impairment which has a significant long-term impact on your ability to do daily activities. I read this and I thought, physical impairment? Yep. Long-term impact? Yep. Significant impact on my ability to do daily tasks? Yeah. So that was it. I was disabled. But what did that actually mean for my daily life? In order to understand my disability, I first had to understand the medical condition that I was diagnosed with. And you may be thinking, isn't that the same thing? My medical condition is categorized by the symptoms that I experience, and my disability comes from days when I'm faced with inaccessibility in the way that society works. For example, I struggle with the stairs. Luckily, many places have lifts now, which means I can navigate the different floors with ease, but what happens when somewhere doesn't have a working lift? I'm forced to use the stairs, facing pain, fatigue, soft tissue damage, things which a non-disabled person wouldn't have to think about when doing something as simple as climbing the stairs. When you first begin to learn about disability, it's important to listen to those who are further along in their disability journey. Social media is a great place to start this. There are plenty of disabled people online talking about the issues that the disabled community are facing. Diversifying your social media means you'll get used to seeing disabled bodies, hearing disabled voices, changing your thinking from, well, they're being overly sensitive, to, that must be an important issue if so many people are talking about it. In learning about the issues that the disabled community are facing, it can be upsetting to learn about the disproportionate rates of abuse, unemployment, and financial concerns that disabled people are currently facing. This can also generate a lot of anger towards the social systems that are responsible for this. And the next two steps will demonstrate how to channel this anger into change. Step two is to communicate. Out of the three steps, this is the one that I struggled with most. Communicate means talking to those around you about your disability, your health condition, and the support that you need. Learning to use the word disabled is a huge part of this. 
By not using the word disabled, you're feeding into the idea that disability is bad or something to be afraid of. Disabled people aren't less, and no one should think themselves lucky to not be disabled. Instead, you should be thinking, what can I do to help create an accessible society and to support the disabled people around me? When you've come to terms with using the label disabled, it can become second nature to say it and not immediately think, oh my goodness, my life is over, I'm disabled, I can't do anything. But remember, when you're talking to those around you, this may be the first time that they're hearing about invisible and dynamic disabilities, and it may take time for them to understand what you're telling them. But in time, they will learn and they will understand. Another part of communicating is communicating kindly with yourself. Learning to recognize your ableist thoughts, learn where they're coming from, and stop them. For example, maybe I'm lazy and not actually disabled. I hate the word lazy. Choosing to rest when your mind or body is too tired is seen as a bad thing in today's society. But trust me, if I don't take a rest, my body is going to be taking one for me. My self-perception of lazy comes from when I compare myself to my non-disabled peers. How can they can do things that I can't? And then I remember they're not facing the same barriers that I am. The third step is to advocate. And I say third and not final, because this step never truly ends. When I first began to advocate for disabled rights, I learned how much of the Equality Act you can memorize and quote word for word when you're faced with discrimination, inaccessibility, or just really want someone to be quiet when they're questioning you as to why you're using a lift. When I first began to advocate in my SEU, I learned how many disabled university students were facing accessibility issues, and even further, that many of these students thought they were on their own. No one wanted to be that person complaining but I took on a role to be that person. If I could call out inaccessibility and discrimination when I saw it, then I don't care if someone wants to call me a snowflake. If I'm actively making a change for the lives of disabled students, then I don't care what others think about me. Confronting your internalized ableism isn't a simple three-step process and then you're done. It's two steps forward and one step back until you go and find the way to a working lift. There will be cycles of thinking, well, I'm a confident disabled person. I know my own body, my own limits, and I can do this, which will then change into, but what if I'm faking everything and I'm just lazy and I'm doing all of this for attention? But then you realize, whatever you think you're doing for attention, you're also doing when you're alone, at home, with no one to get this attention from. Confronting internalized ableism is difficult, but we need to do it to create an accessible society. And I believe that one day you will be able to say confidently and without hesitation, hi, my name's Joe, and I'm disabled. Thank you.